Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the end times in paradise, somewhere in the green mountains of Vermont where my little, uh, my little bear hunter somehow miraculously has survived his first encounter with a full grown bear. Good God, little dog. Anyway, after all that excitement, it is time to get back to reality since it is now Friday morning, June 29th, 2018. It is time for my two-part ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply open my email box to see how <coughs> this planet is heading in directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. In the first week of 2018, and uh, we're going to start out like I always do after I put my little, my little bear dog uh, down at mongabay.com. And good lord, my old apocaloptimistic buddy, Rhett Butler, and the boys and girls at mongabay.com. You know, guys, I could make a full-fledged rant out of any one of these stories. This is, uh, I, I must say that Manga Bay is even topping itself. And of course, since they are centered on tropical rainforest, obviously their lead off story I've already mentioned from the mainstream media. This is Manga Bay's spin on the story. The world lost an area of tropical forest the size of Bangladesh in 2017. So according to the newest data we're looking at 39 million acres of tropical rainforest bulldozed off the face of the planet last year and take a wild guess the number one criminal on the planet would be well, obviously Brazil came out on top of the most tree cover lost of any tropical country and tree cover loss also rose dramatically in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Colombia. I love this one. Guess the, the main country where new deforestation dropped last year was Indonesia. I mean the rate. That's simply because there are no tropical forests left in Indonesia to bulldoze to make way for oil palm plantations. Uh, this is the reason that the total acreage fell in Indonesia last year for the first year. They, they, they've already, just take a look at Borneo sometime if you want to see how fucked we are. Do you think so? Wow. Experts attribute the upward trend in tree cover loss primarily to continued land clearing for agricultural purposes. No shit, okay, now let's go over to the shithole country of Rwanda where they're looking at um, climate change uh, screwing with the mountain gorillas in Virunga National Park um, with the latest census of 604 mountain gorillas left in this park talking at you know looking at how all the various ways that climate change are gonna fuck uh, the last 604 mountain gorillas. Now what of course is nowhere included in this story is, is, is what nobody is talking about. Well, I, I mean I've mentioned it a couple of times where because of all of the violence going on inside Virunga National Park, they have just shut down the park for the rest of the year. So nobody knows how many gorillas are left in uh, Virunga National Park as, as everyone just flees the violence, uh, my guess is the, that there are a hell of a lot less than 604 
uh, mountain gorillas left. My guess, it is an ongoing slaughter uh, of the final few gorillas up there. Uh, so, uh, yes, climate change is going to take out the last few mountain gorillas on the planet over the next, whether it's five years or 50, but by the time climate change and bats clean up, there will be no gorillas left in Virunga National Park. Jesus. Uh, anyway, so goodbye to the mountain gorilla from the shithole country of Rwanda to the shithole country of Madagascar where we're seeing a, a repeat of what happened in Houston, Texas with Harvey, this big ass cyclone slammed into this giant mine. And I think is this is the the uh, Ambatovi Mine Complex, a massive operation to extract nickel and co cobalt was, you know, was slammed by this giant cyclone and guess the, and no shit Sherlock, <clears throat> all of this shit, the, 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 these industrial whatever, these mine tailings and all of this crap uh, going into the rivers and I think what's bad for Houston, Texas is bad for Madagascar. You will see this story. Uh, repeated over and over and over again as you have <coughs> these giant super storms uh, going up, 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 uh, slamming in to, the, to all of these giant industrial complexes, these goddamn miners and oil refineries and chemical plants. Uh, you know, guys, we're fucked. Uh... But I guess some of the people in Papua New Guinea have finally just had enough of this shit. Papua New Guinea landowners take up arms against natural gas pro project. On June 21st, heavily armed civilian groups set fire to construction equipment at the Exxon Mobil uh, natural gas project in the New Guinea Highlands. Good for you. Good luck on that. I love it when they ask uh, a question in a headline, could climate change and El Nino spell the end for tropical forest? The answer to the question is yes, climate change particularly uh, with the rising number of El Ninos, sure as shit could and will spell the end for tropical forest. And, you know, pointing out, uh, as we've mentioned, which I think was one of the biggest uh, climate change stories of the year, barely mentioned by anyone, is how the tropical rainforests have already gone over a tipping point and they're no longer absorbing uh, carbon dioxide from the air. They're actually now a net producer of carbon dioxide. And it's this vicious feedback loop going back and forth. Uh, and the, when the next El Nino comes along, and they're coming along more and more rapidly, it's going to make uh, the one from 2016 look like a walk in the park. Um, there you go. Scientists worry that a new tipping point could be reached where tropical forests collapse and it just entirely uh, yeah, we've already passed one tipping point, and this is the obvious next one. Okay, this next story, uh, I, I knew it was coming. Uh, I just didn't know what form it would take, and this is this, uh, this look into uh, how Donald Trump's trade war is going to ramp up deforestation in the Amazon. Uh, it's already showing up as, as Donald Trump 
puts all these tariffs against U.S. soy and beef against China, where the hell do you think China is going to turn for, for the soy and beef that the U.S. is now supplying them? They're going to Brazil to buy their soy and beef that does not have these tariffs and take a wild guess what that means it is that the soy industry and the beef industry and the Brazilian Amazon is cheering on Donald Trump's trade wars because it is more money in their pockets. Uh, good Lord, uh, the Amazon and the, and the Serato are already major exporters of both commodities and even before the trade war were creating a boom in infrastructure construction to bring those products to Chinese markets. Uh, and even without the new trade war, experts expect Brazil to pass the U.S. this year as the world's largest soy producer. And there you go. Uh, and if, well, not if anymore, as the U.S.-China trade war results in a significant surge in Brazilian commodity production to answer demand in China, deforestation rates there could soar and, uh, and actually could literally push uh, the entire Amazon jungle past the, the, this climate tipping point, converting rainforest to savanna, greatly swelling carbon emissions, and potentially destabilizing the regional and even global climate. So uh, anybody uh, who thinks that this, uh, that this new trade war is only an economic issue, pull your head out of your ass. It's th this is one more example uh, of how all of these ramping up economic collapses and ecological collapses, they're, they're all one big mess and trying to, you know, to disentangle this uh, increasingly uh, entangled mess, uh, give it up. We're fucked. Anyway, thank you, Donald Trump, for uh, sending the Amazon rainforest into its final collapse from the Amazon rainforest to the bottom of the deepest oceans. This is more research as, as more and more of this plastic shit is uh, finding its way to the very bottom of the deepest oceans in the most remote corners of the planet. So by according to this latest study dredging up all of this shit, 89%, 89% of, uh, of this plastic shit that they've pulled up out of the deepest parts of the ocean were single-use items such as plastic bags and water bottles. No shit, Sherlock. So uh, the, these are for all the techno-utopians thinking that all we need to do about sea level rise is build more seawalls. Well, how about this? From the shithole country of India, on India's coast, a man-made solution exacerbates the problem. There you go. Uh, coastal erosion in southern India has already destroyed hundreds of homes. We already have the, these refugees uh, heading inland. It, it's unfolding today, and so what the authorities did was build the seawalls. Yes, uh, but guess what? Uh, their goddamn little seawalls is actually making the problem of coastal erosion worse than it was before they built the seawalls. Oh, shit, 
Okay, let's go to one of the most important ecosystems left on the planet. This is the Lucere ecosystem somewhere out there uh, in Indonesia, I believe. Wow, we see PepsiCo uh, destroying one of the most biodiverse spots left on the planet. Yes. But don't worry, Pepsi Corporation is going to probe claims of deforestation in its palm oil suppliers in the Lucere ecosystem. PepsiCo has launched an investigation into reports of deforestation in one of its suppliers oil palm plantations located in the Lucere ecosystem. Wow, do you think so? Hmm. PepsiCo is alleging, and who knows at this point, that it weren't it wasn't me what was what was the old uh, Chuck Berry song they're claiming that uh, it's not the the giant corporate planet eaters but it's actually those little planet nibblers that are destroying the ecosystem and and, and guys this is where uh, I, I'm not going to defend PepsiCo, but I do believe them, at least partly, that it is the planet nibblers joining the planet eaters uh, for all of these, uh, you know, myth of the uh, wild, the myth of the noble savage suff sufferers. Uh, PepsiCo has recently updated and expanded its policy on sustainable palm oil, which has been criticized by environmentalists for failing to ensure the elimination of forest destruction and labor rights violations. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, guys, there is so much uh, this week in Manga Bay. Uh, I'm just going to have to skip over a lot of these stories. As long as we're talking about these unadulterated horseshit, sustainable uh, palm oil and sustainable forestry uh, certifications. What a bunch of fucking bullshit. So... Uh, here's a good one, kind of sounding like the seawall story in India. Logging roads drive loss of intact forest in these bullshit certified logging concessions. Uh, so logging roads in Central Africa actually cause greater loss of intact forest landscapes on certified timber concessions compared to non-certified concessions. A new analysis shows, and this is because certified timber companies typically build more robust road networks than, than these little guerrilla operations. The findings highlight an apparent contradiction between certification for logging huh, uh, and, and, and the protection of intact forest, leading some critics to argue that IFL protection should not be part of the Forest Stewardship Council's standards. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, this is the unforeseen consequences, uh, worse than previously expected stories of the week, every, uh, where you turn. Uh, anyway, guys, I have got to move ahead. Uh, I, I love this hilarious commentary. 
Uh, government regulation is the missing ingredient in efforts to end deforestation, huh? Despite countless corporate commitments, tropical deforestation for agriculture remains rampant. No shit, New research reveals that we need more government regulation to achieve meaningful results. And, uh, yeah, yeah, right, but of course, I don't know if I were to read this whole story, do they point out that the, the, these goddamn fascist governments on every country on the planet are completely in, in the pockets uh, of these goddamn planet eaters. I'll talk about this in another story in a minute. You know, mentioning how how the goddamn European Union, as I talked about last week, uh, you know, backwalking on its uh, palm oil commitments, where just uh, just last week the goddamn European Union bowed to pressure. From, from these goddamn uh, oil palm uh, producers. And, and, and if the fucking European Union ain't, ain't gonna stand up to these motherfuckers, uh, what, what do you think is gonna happen in, in, in Indonesia and Nigeria? Uh, you know, pull your head out of your ass. All right, let's see. Where the hell am I? I'm losing my place in this never-ending uh, laundry list. Here's a, a, a new research. I think I'm going to mention this in part two of this rant uh, about light pollution. I've talked about this. This is talking about all of this new research. Uh, talking about uh, LED lights, which, uh, you know, I've mentioned this before. I'm not going to, I can't get into a Jevons Paradox rant that uh, now that LED lights are, have been unleashed onto the planet, you know, being promoted by these little limp dick, mainstream, greeny environmentalists that, that uh, these LEDs are saving the planet and more and more research coming out uh, about how LED uh, light uh, pollution is, is fucking with human health with uh, with uh, animal health, with with the ecosystem health, as this entire goddamn planet gets lit up by the, by these LED lights, uh, these save the planet LED lights are actually fucking the planet more than the lights uh, that they were meant to replace. Oh, shit. Yes. Uh, wow, how about this one, uh, talking about this, uh, all of these, these green, I'm getting so fucking sick of this corporate greenwashing, uh, maybe I need to interview this fellow Bill Lawrence, a tropical ecologist at Australia's James Cook University, uh, argues that scientists scientist should work to slow the pace of infrastructure development around the world. While many of these giant infrastructure projects are viewed as wholly positive because they're intended to connect markets and create jobs, a lot of them, quote, should not happen, Lawrence said. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to let the scientists uh, turn this freight train around. Oh, God, here's a story out of the shithole country of Honduras 
about some indigenous tribe down there being fucked by some planet eater. Uh, okay, this is the update from last week's uh, title story about Indonesia. You know, said Indonesia setting this new sustainability course for its infrastructure development. So, in, in hand with that, Indonesia turning to green, to green finance for development projects. Indonesia, one of the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitters, is now turning to green finance markets to fund new development projects it promises will be both environmentally and socially friendly. In issuing these green and sustainable bonds, Indonesia joins a growing number of developing countries seeking to appeal to clueless, fucking, limp dick, mainstream, greeny environmentalist, uh, blah, 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 but people with brains question just how green and sustainable these bonds really are, highlighting their concerns about corporate greenwashing. No shit, Sherlock. You know, don't get me going. It's these goddamn little limp dick, uh, greeny mainstream environmentalist uh, swallowing one thing fucking word of this bullshit. They really almost make me as sick as the goddamn Donald Trump flag wavers. You know, these deluded, clueless fucking morons. Anyway, so, uh, so we've been talking about Indonesia's new commitment to all of this green, sustainable development. Uh, so I, I had to get a sick, twisted laugh out of this story. In Indonesia's coal heartland, jaded voters weigh <coughs> the same old candidates. Years of rampant natural resource exploitation and mismanagement in East Kalimantan, the coal mining heartland of Indonesia, have resulted in voter apathy as the province goes to the polls for a new governor this week. <clears throat> All of the candidates are veteran local officials. Most have already been implicated in corruption cases, fueling a sense that there will be little improvement in the man, don't you do it, in the management of the province's mines, regardless of who wins. Environmentalist activists say none of the candidates are concerned about the environment, with no programs on environmental conservation in any of their stated campaign platforms. No shit, Sherlock. Yep, thank you for that taste of reality. Uh, anyway, here is a story on how new seaports are imperiling Colombian crocodiles. No shit, Sherlock. Here is a story on the last glimpse of a Cambodian paradise documenting an area on the eve of its destruction. The sheer scale of logging operations inside Cambodia's Virache National Park makes it a wonder that there is anything left of the forest, especially as the timber just keeps on flowing into Vietnam unabated and then from there to China. In fact, Cambodia 
has one of the world's highest deforestation rates. No shit, Sherlock. All hope could well be lost as man in progress must be served, but are the nails firmly placed in the biodiversity coffin and awaiting the final pounding? Perhaps not. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Oh, God. Uh, from the shithole country of Cambodia to this absolute unadulterated descent into hopium fueled apocalyptimism, coral reef oases that thrive and amid threats give hope, give hope for conservationists. You know, I was just talking about how the UN has taken the, the, the coral reef off of Belize, off of threatened world heritage sites. Uh, my, I, I, I don't even, don't, don't even get me fucking going. All right. Uh, wow. Imagine this. As Colombia expands its palm oil sector, scientists worry about wildlife. Hmm. Colombia's aim to overtake Thailand to become the world's third largest supplier. Ah! God, don't, there, are, there is no bear hunting left here. Sancho? And you say, Pop, it's a chippy, it's not a bear. I don't know if it's a bear or not. A anyway, my little bear hunting dog is seeing something down there in the woods. He needs to go investigate. Uh... Let's see, Colum Colombia's aims to overtake Thailand to become the world's third largest supplier of palm oil. Uh, we will see, and my guess is that they, <coughs> they will, <coughs> do you believe that numerous studies have shown that palm oil plantations provide poor habitat for wildlife. Hmm, never thought about that one. Um, anyway, guys, I'm just going to wrap it up there. I could go on and on, but I got to go save my little dog from being eaten by a fucking bear. And uh, I got to get around to part two of this rant. Uh, after I pull my dog from the jaws of a bear. We, we, we are, we're so fucked. We are so fucked in our little garden of, of flowers. There's actually a, a story somewhere looking at uh, using uh, treated wood for window boxes. <clears throat> I mean, we're fucked everywhere, starting at your window boxes. Be back with part two as soon as I go find my little dog. Bye, guys.